Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, April 12, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Patch Tuesday, so lots of patches today. Let's get started with Microsoft. We got patches for 114 different vulnerabilities. Seven of them are critical and one is already being exploited. The already exploited vulnerability is CVE 2023-28252. This is a vulnerability in the Windows Common Log File System driver. This driver runs as system. So in this case, an arbitrary code execution gives you arbitrary code execution as system. That's where the privilege escalation comes from. The Windows Common Log File System driver has been the source of a number of similar vulnerabilities in the past. CVSS score of this is only 7.8 because after all it's just a privilege escalation vulnerability. We do have a number of sort of similar privilege escalation vulnerabilities being patched with this update but this is the only one that's currently being exploited. Now let's take a look at the critical vulnerabilities. One that I think is kind of interesting is a DHCP server remote code execution vulnerability. Yes, that one is rated critical. Not a lot of details as to what this exactly entails. It does, however, require authentication and does require an RPC call to the DHCP service. So not something like a simple uh, unauthenticated DHCP message, which is why the CVSS score of this vulnerability is only 8.8, not sort of in the 9.8 range. An attacker would have to be located on the same network as the DHCP service. And two critical vulnerabilities in the layer two tunneling protocol. It seems like we had a few of them recently. Of course, that's something that's not usually enabled by default. Next, we have a critical vulnerability in the Microsoft message queuing service. This is a remote code execution vulnerability. This service is not enabled by default. It's sort of one of those message queuing services you use to basically, you know, be able to exchange messages and hold them if the recipient is offline. Next, the remote code execution vulnerability in the raw image extension. Raw images usually produced by cameras, nothing that a web browser or so would typically uh, display. More sort of VPN-ish uh, remote code execution. So the next to last uh, critical vulnerability is in the Windows point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, and then finally a critical vulnerability in the Windows Pragmatic General Multicaster PGM. So overall, nothing that's sort of outrageously bad here. Get it patched, but uh, nothing that I would say needs extra attention. And not a patch officially, but also a welcome improvement to Windows security is that Labs, the local administrator password solution, is now officially part of Windows 10 and 11. Used to be available as a separate download, but it's now integrated into the operating system. What Labs does for you is it basically helps you manage the administrator account passwords. It automatically rotates them, creates random passwords, and then backs them up to active uh, directory. So this way you don't really need to know what the local admin passwords are, but if you really need them, well, you can retrieve them and you still have access to. Now, much of this is still in private preview at this point, but should become public later this year. And check the link in the show notes for additional details. And then one more Microsoft related update here. Uh, there is now sort of an update or a new update for CVE 2013-3900. So why do we get an update for a 10 year old vulnerability? The reason is 
pretty simple. It's the 3CX compromise. Uh, that compromise involved a DLL file with additional data added in a way that the signature was actually not altered. This is an old vulnerability that was patched back in 2013, but back then the patch was not made sort of mandatory. And uh, that was essentially fixed now that uh, this patch was pushed out as a mandatory patch like any other patch. Then, of course, we also got some updates from Acrobat. Probably the one that affects most people here is Acrobat and Reader again. And finally, we did get updates from SAP. That's sort of their normal monthly update as well. Total 24 notes, as they call it, 19 of which are new issues and five are updates to previous uh, bulletins, a total of three critical issues that were addressed here. Well, and that's it for today. All we have time for today. Tomorrow, we'll hopefully get back to our normal program and not be so patch heavy. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.